What's going on YouTube? I just wanted to throw this at the beginning of my video to let you know that in the middle of the recording that you were about to see, my power went out. So I was actually happy that I was able to salvage some of the information that was on the recording, but half of my video went missing. So I'm going to show you what I was able to keep and then some other things that I filled in that missed on the video when it messed up. I didn't want you guys to miss out on a video this week just because of the power where I'm at. So I do apologize for that. But as always, it's some gems. Go ahead and go get them. Let's get it. What's going on YouTube? It is your boy Ray Bands, and I am back with another video and this video is going to be talking about trading confluence with the regular candlesticks okay now what you see on my screen is actually a piece of confluence i do have two of the moving averages turned off at the moment the 200 and the 100 um i'm actually just gonna get straight into it because i know a lot of people really want to master their entries or at least know where the entry zones are that's really what I'm going to be focusing on in this video. Um, and those two moving averages are really set there just to let you know that you are in confluence with the higher time frame. That's all they're there for. So if you start to see in an area good moves and it comes back to the 21, even to the 50, and it's not breaking that 50, you see how price right here is not breaking the 50? You, you'll you know just from it respecting the 50 like that, that these lines are going to continue to be strong. Look what happens when the 50 is broken. The lines get closer together. All right, let me see if I can find us a real good example. Okay, you see this? 50 is broken. Price comes up, respects the 21, pushes off. It's not pretty. It's nice and spiky. Not pretty at all. But notice how the moving averages get closer and bunched up. And when that happens, that's when you start to get all of this. That's when we start to get all of that. So that's what those lines are for. So for this particular video, I'm just going to turn off the 100 and I'm going to turn off the 200 because I really want to focus on the 50, the 21, and the 8. Okay. First, let's look at the 8. All right, the eight movement average is very valuable when we see this right here. This, when I see that the ADX is rising, clearly I have good space. It's already done across. I have good space between both, and I see that ADX line just growing between the two. That's when this eight EMA starts to get very valuable, which means really. Every time the eight EM, every time price comes back to the eight EMA, you can place a trade. Every time, right here comes back, slow close, slow close, two minute entry, you clear it. Right here, slow close, slow close, which it closes above. Enter, you clear it. Right now, this one I probably would have missed this one. Definitely, probably would have missed this one just because it's it's not really near the moving average. So I, I possibly could have missed this trade. Um, and then of course, you know we got trace. Uh, price tracing back to the 21, stalls out a little bit, pops up, and we got some craziness going on right here. But what I'm looking for is entry. So the eight moving average, I want to set like some rules that you can go by so you can find yourself taking more of the correct trades. Um, one, like I said, if you don't have a squeeze, like right here, we know that this is a squeeze because if we zoom out, you see how the ADX looks. Trading inside of this can be very stressful. Um, I did a live session where I took some really good entries, but because I didn't wait for this to execute out, I got spiked out the last 10 to 15 seconds on all or on two trades. And then the last trade of my live session was just blatantly wrong. So terrible trade session for me that day. And I had to get off because it was like, oh, man, what's going on? But I was really caught inside of a squeeze and I didn't even realize it because I wasn't trading with the regular candles for a good minute. Um, we were trading more Hakanashi. So what I'm looking at is this area right here. Like if we see a squeeze, great. We identify that, okay, it's starting to respect the 21, great. And then we see a good push. It's coming back to the eight and we can clearly see, hey, it's been playing for a long time. It's finally starting to have some space. 
We got that moving. I'm going to trade the ADMA. That's the mindset you should have. I want price to get as close as possible to the eight moving average so I can clear the trade. And every time that price gets back and that and the pressure is still growing and you still have good space between um, the green and the orange line, or if your colors are blue and red, whatever it is, um, you know, you can take those trades. Another thing that you can you can think is this. When I see price closing above the ADMA, so we have a good push. Of course, we want to wait. Price just is not going to just go up, up, up. It will give you an opportunity to enter. So you see a close like this, right? You're a little more patient. When I see a close like that, I'm like, all right, I want to see price get closer to the moving average. So it'll push down. It'll come up right here and close. Even if you're just one candle patient and you take a two minute entry right here, two minutes later, it's way up here. It's a clear. Look at this entry, entry close to that ADMA. You could take a two minute entry right there. Clear. You let it come back to the ADMA. Take an entry right there. Clear. And you do this. And right here, it pushes down and comes up. You can catch a double entry in this area. Clear. That's all I'm looking for when it comes to the 8 EMA. If it's not trending, taking a trade off the 8 EMA is probably going to be like a reversal trade. The next EMA I look at is the 21. I want to see, hey, is price going through the 21 a lot? Like right here, do you see how price is just closing near the 21, but it's not breaking the 50? So if I'm going to put a trade anywhere in this area, I want it to be as close to the 50 as possible. If you're going to push down like this with these little bitty candles and then I place a buy trade right here and you just somehow get extra strong and just destroy my entry, then I'm supposed to lose that trade. Like That's how I think about that. You know, So I won't hesitate to enter when I already see that the previous market is respecting. Right. So boom, take that entry. You got you a nice little trade right there. And. And watch this. You see right here this little wick at the bottom because this is regular price action candles. Now, um, you know, this right here would have probably been a flat bottom for Hakanashi. But now you can see the rejection. It tries to push down and instantly starts to move up. So you can catch an entry, you know, before it gets way out here and catch another trade right there. Comes from experience, but you can't catch those trades. That's that's a beautiful trade to enter. Now, when I'm looking at this, I'm not even referencing my ADX. I'm only referencing my ADX when I have confluence. That way we can stay away from being confused. We can stay away from trying to trade when it looks like this. If we don't have confluence, if you look at the ADX and it doesn't look like confluence, like you don't obviously see a trend, then we need to be finding zones. You need to be finding zones. That's what we need to be looking for. So if you see right here in this area, if you see right here in this area that it's trending and you're like, well, if I look to the left, I don't see anything right there. And obviously, when we're looking at a live chart, it's nothing to the right, so we don't know what's coming. You can find your zones by looking at where the rejection areas are. So you see that this pushes away. It comes right here. It shoots up. You can put a line right there. All right? So let, matter of fact, let's test that. We're going to put a line right there. We're going to make that white. Three. Then we see it push up again. comes right here. Boom. Oh, look at that. You know what? I'm going to set a line right there. Let me just pay attention to that area because it obviously is order sitting right there. Somebody's watching it. Now, as we go into the future, price pushes up here. It starts to push down. We want to see, okay, are you going to go back to the 21? Where, where are you going to make a significant turn at? Now, with Hakanashi, it's really easy to see that. With this, it can be a little confusing. But what I'm looking at is this is a significant turn, right? It goes all the way through to the other side of the Bollinger Bands. This is a significant turn. Now, as you can see, the line that we have right here, really the close of this area is closer, but this line was pretty close, and it's okay to adjust those lines. So if you just move that up right there, now you have it. Does it mean you might have to wait a little bit, 10, 15 minutes, to actually get some lines? Sure, sure, no problem. You waited 10 or 15 minutes, 30 minutes, doesn't matter. You you got a top um, a top deal right here because it is significantly moved from that area, and you got a bottom deal right here. So now, okay, you have context to your trade. Let's see what happens. You see price push up, respect the 21, respect the 21, respect the 21, tries to break, breaks through. We're not gonna we're not gonna rush these trades. We know that it's not breaking the 50. So if you enter a trade anywhere in this area, what you're trading is I don't believe price is going to break the 50. That's what you're trading. Okay, pushes up, gets closer to the top right here in this area. If you put a trade anywhere in this area, what you're trading is, hey, I believe that the market is going to start trending. 
That's why you put a trade in this area. That's either right or wrong. Right. There's no such thing as a perfect entry, the right entry, the entry that never loses. Um, it's no such thing as that. Now, the more you trade, you're going to know the higher quality of an entry. The more you trade, you're going to know the higher quality of the entry. And we already know our highest quality entries are going to come after a squeeze. And then we get confluence because it's going to do the same thing over and over. It's going to come out of the squeeze. It's going to get to the eight moving average. Boom, boom, boom. Right. And it's going to continue to do that. Now, we notice in areas like this where it's respecting and you want to put a zone like that and you see a nice close off of that area and you want to take a two minute trade like that. That's great. But it'll be really hard to catch this trade if you're looking at your ADX. So understanding that looking at where price is closing and what's being respected, even if you take your time and you're not putting in a lot of trades, but you're really paying attention, you'll find yourself being in the profit way more than being out of the profit. When you're putting trades outside of the Bollinger Bands, you'll find yourself probably being spiked out way more than actually being in the profit. Yes, you can place a trade right here and, and look up and have two green candles going up that disrespect the Bollinger Bands because of pressure. But most of the time, even if you get a great push, it'll just come back at you spike and spike you out. So um, I would definitely keep an eye on that. What I want to do now is I actually want to put in... I want to put in a few trades. That's what I want to do. So we know our rules. If we're not looking for 21 respects, if we don't have confluence, we're looking for zones to trade off of. That's what we're that's what we want to do. Um, if we have confluence, we want to take our trades off the eight moving average. Right. And really, overall, we want to take our, our most of our trades off of our 21. If we are seeing some respect in the area, we want to see it off the 21. We don't want to be catching trades in between the 21 and the 50 when it's transitioning. We want to see some respect, a good zone somewhere that's solid where we can catch some secure entries and get some clears. So I'm going to click through some of these pairs. Now, look at this when I'm not looking at the pair. Y'all see how beautiful these rejections are. All right. Boeing. It just broke the 50 right here. And I'm looking at the EMA. I'm looking at the EMA. The EMA broke the 50. Let's go back and look at Apple really quick. Let's go back and look at Apple. Look how close those EMAs were. Uh-oh. Nice, nice, good space. Nice, good space. Price pushed back down to a particular zone, but your EMA has already broken it. And we got good closes near it. That's a great trade to take. All right, so now that we're referencing that, that's already going. All right, we got good space right here. We got the, this breaking. We got some crazy candles right here. Comes all the way down to the 21 push off. Let's see. Off the 21, off the 21. Okay. We're going to pay attention to Boeing. So I know I'm looking at this 21. Look at the pushes off the 21, pushes off, pushes off. So if I really want to take a trade, I want to take it off the 21. I see a reject of the eight. I'm not even worried about, I'm not even worried about my ADX right now. Notice how right here in this area on this close, if we would have took an entry, you see how price does that? That's just annoying. Now look at the rejection off the eight. We're noticing the rejection off that eight. That's a trend right there. Put a star on Boeing. Okay, I already have a star on Boeing. Look at the push off the eight. I don't 
don't believe you though. I don't believe that. I don't think that's going anywhere. I'm gonna come back and look at it just to see. Let's look at Cisco, craziness, Intel. Notice how, look how far under pressure is for the ADX right here. And all of the switches that we have going, that's like zone trading all day. And then how price is going through the moving averages multiple times. Now this right here looks like it's sloping down, right? We have a shoulder, a head, a shoulder. So if we wanted to say that this is a, a heads and shoulder pattern right here, then this area right here would be very important to trade. This horizontal line right there. It's a pretty important area. I'm also looking how it's like really nothing right here. It's like an equilibrium. But that, that looks like shoulder, head, shoulder, clearly. So let's see how this reacts at the 8. Look at the rejections off the 21. Strong push. Strong push. Also keep in mind that most most of trading is waiting. You're just waiting, waiting to see what you want to see and catching an entry. All right. Good push into the 21. Instantly start to get some rejects. We don't want to rush anything. All right. We can notice that it did push a little bit past the 50. Our moving average pushes up above, falls back under. So I'm really thinking of like a moving average retest right here. Like, are you going to respect it? I'm paying attention to where price is closing. What's happening? We got a good momentum candle right here. After a good momentum candle, even if it has good momentum candle and it stalls out and go, entering for a reversal trade off of a candle like that is just hard. When you see a good push like that, the probability of it to push another candle is high. All right, back up in that zone has been... Been rejecting. I'm looking at this right here. All right, big push. So I like to see. Go ahead and give it to me, baby. All right, so we put that trade right there. Why did I enter that trade? Right here, I have my 21 moving average falling under. I'm just looking at the history right here. So we have some sideways movement. I noticed that my 21, I'm not even worried about my green right now. My 21 pushes up to my 50 moving average comes above just a little bit, and then falls back under, right? Now the 50 moving average is falling below. I have price trying to push above. So even though right here, the 50 moving average was falling below, price tried to push up right here and fell all the way back down. Look at the strength of that, boom, boom. So I'm placing an area off the, I'm placing a trade on the 21 saying, it's not going above the 50. Like the average of the movement is going to be below the 21, not above the 21. That's why I put that trade right there. Okay, 
Now, while we let uh, Johnson & Johnson play out, we're going to put a star on that. And let's go look through some other things. I know we made it through a full candle. Uh, yeah, that should be a close pretty soon. Oh, uh, wait. Well, let's watch it. Let's see if Big Joe is lurking in the markets today. Got a couple more seconds. And that's a clear right there. Let's get it. All right, so we got a clear on that. Remember, we were using our 21. We're just looking at our 21. We basically said we believe with this entry that more, more of price is going to be below 21 than above. And we took that with the context that we saw. All right. Now it's probably going to go ahead and just take off. I'm going to see if I can go find another example. All right, we got a lot of spiky, a lot of spiky movement right here. Price is going in between the 50 and the 21, right? So if we turn on a higher time frames, we're probably going to see them real close. Yep, look at this. Look how close everything is. Look how close everything is. We can turn those back off. All right. So fractal clusters at the top. Fractal clusters at the bottom. Trading the down trade right here just makes a lot of sense. Why? Because look at look at this. Strong. 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 That's what I'm looking at. If it decides that it wants to break on my entry, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Because in the past, that's what it's been doing. I, I want to trade what makes the most sense. I'm not trying to guess. I'm trying to intelligently put the trade in you know from what i've seen and what's happening right now so no pressure in the market that's a reversal pattern right there we're going to put a down trade right here we're going to trade with what we see we have a zone right here we're trading to say hey this is still an equilibrium right here so we want to see that so that's why we set that trade right there Oh wow. That's that's a snipe. All right, about half of our trade time is up right now. And you can see your trade time right here, or you can click over right here and see it. So, and this is full screen mode too, which is nice and clean. You don't have anything on the screen. What I, what I want to unlock for you guys is that, you know, no matter what you think about the market, so no matter if you think you're trading against a broker, no matter if you think you you know you like trading the currency exchange and, and you think that that sum is wrong with that, it doesn't matter what you think. Um, it's in the aspect of that, if you understand what you're looking at and you just go from guessing to like putting in educated trades and, and thinking in terms of moving average, you'll find yourself winning more trades. And if you are losing trades, you're like. Either like really just losing them or barely losing them, which means that you're on the right track. So we saw that idea. We saw a sideways market. We saw our EMAs close. We saw the strength of the moves in that area. That's why we took that trade. Big smack. All right. Let's see if we can go find something else really quick. All right. Um, let's look at Tesla. And right now I'm just I'm really just looking at my EMAs. I'm not really referencing my 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 ADX. I'm just looking and seeing what what makes the most sense. What makes the most sense? My ADX is only powerful when I can see confluence. Like right now this looks like confluence. It's not pretty though. You see how 
look how big these movements are. One big movement like that with a wrong entry, even if your trade is correct in the overall direction, because we're doing two minute trades, it's a loss. So you have to you have to be careful. So when I see something like this, the question to me is, do I want to trade confluence? Is this a strong enough entry for my eight moving average? Me personally, I just don't like the way that looks. So I'm not even going to trade it. And it's 78%. You can keep that. If it's not over 80%. Nine times out of 10, I'm not even interested in it. I'm looking at an area like this. This is like a reversal pattern. Um, looking at when we have a reversal, it comes to it's moving pretty strong. It comes to the eight. It pushes up just a little bit above, and then it gives you the same pattern again. The tendency, the tendency for that to go ahead and drop to the twenty one is pretty high. However, we want to focus on taking trades off the twenty one. We don't want to try to guess. We don't want to try to guess the reversal. Can you catch reversal trades? You know, if you have something like this where you know, nice push, and then it comes up to that area not too far away and it makes its way down. Yes, but that can just make you confused. We want to focus on taking our trades off good areas, right? Like this right here is called a crunch, an EMA crunch. How Notice how the closes are coming between the 8 and the 21, and it stays right there, and then boom, it'll shoot up or shoot down off that area. So, all right. Let's, I want to see if I can find at least one more example that looks good. Something that just makes a lot of sense. Something that makes a lot of sense. Ooh. Okay, so this Johnson, this is the trade that we caught right here. A little earlier at the top right here. And it just kept on going. It just kept on going. That's a dirty drop. We missed the move, though. We missed that move. Microsoft giving us a nice momentum candle right here. Engulfing candle coming into our eight moving average. Trading that to the 21 is tempting. Very tempting. Look at that. Mm. Mm. Another thing that I noticed too, when one pair starts to break out, they all kind of start to break out. Look at this drop. Look at this drop. And the way you think about high frequency, you can think about US 30 being the same way too. That's a that's a lot of money. You catch a drop like this in US 30, paid. Big paid. Twitter. Visa. Amazon. Okay. I'm not gonna force anything. If I see something I like, look at that. Look at that. Entry zone took off. Entry zone took off. Missed that. Boeing, Cisco. Okay. Let's look at this. Boeing. What is Boeing doing? All right. Let's make sense of this. I have a reversal pattern down here at the bottom. A reversal pattern before it breaks the 50. It breaks the 50, comes up, retests the 21, which the 50 was near to, pushes off nicely, retests the 8, pushes off nicely. Now I have a reversal pattern right here at the top. Now it seems like price is coming back to the 21, but in that zone of the 50. See how it touches the 21, starting to struggle. What I'm looking at, or what I want to know, Let's, let's put our higher time frames on to see what's going on. Okay. Broke above our 200, which this was a rainbow for a downtrend. So it broke above our 200, gave us a reversal pattern. Our 50 crossed our 100. So that means that this pink might get a little weak. I would say when price gets back near the 50, taking a trade in that area would be very smart. That's what I would think. Taking a trade in that area would be very smart. That's a nice entry zone. Why? Look at this. Push, push, push all off the 50. And respecting the 21 because the 21 is just nicely moving up. So I really wish that candle would have came down to the 50 in one move. I would have did an instant entry if it would have did that. I would have instantly, as soon as it touched it, 
hopped in right then and there. But we want to see. We want to see what's going to happen. We're going to give it some time, Boeing Company. We're going to turn off our 100, turn off our 200. We're going to wait. We know that we're looking, we're in this area right here. I'm actually going to drop like a box just so you can see what I'm looking at. Oh, that should be blue. There we go. All right, playing at our 21. Playing at our 21. But it's closing between the 8 and closing between the 21. That's where the closes are. The worst thing to do, or what I don't like to do, is sometimes I'll catch a premature entry, which is very frustrating, where I'll enter, It'll drop down for a minute and a half, and then it'll start to transition. And as soon as my trade closes, it'll take off in the direction that I thought. Very annoying for that to happen. So um, learning to be just a little bit more patient usually helps me out. Sometimes I miss good trades because I'm more patient, but I'd much rather miss a good trade than to take a bad trade. So, all right. Got us some indecisiveness right here. What you going to do? What you going to do? All right, nice push, nice push. Now, because this stalled right here, I want to see this come down here and see what type of pattern it gives me. Okay, struggling right here. I got respect, 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 respect. Closes a little stronger right here. Okay, are you gonna touch my zone is the question. Got my uh, eight moving average, touching my 21. It is in this zone. This is an engulfing candle too. So if this comes up and matches this, that's just more indecision. All right, touching my zone. Just because you have a zone right here and that's a good idea for an entry doesn't mean as soon as it touches the zone, we want to take the trade. The reason why I would have been interested earlier is if it was right here, my eight moving average is over my 21 and price pushes all the way down to a zone where it has a strong push at. Yes, I'm interested in a buy for two minutes because I believe it'll pop up and stall before it comes back. That's the idea that I had earlier. But because it took a little minute, you can look at this right here like a mini squeeze. Right. It's squeezed. Like if I go to the lower time frame in this area, it probably was squeezing a little bit. Let's test that theory. Let's go to 15 seconds. All right. Look at this mini sideways. Right. You see it went mini sideways and then it pushed down to the zone. Actually, on the lower time frame, look at that it's starting to pick up. Let's go back to our one minute. We're looking at this. It actually price got to the 50. And it looked like it's going to close under the 50. Let's see. I really want to see where it's going to close at. That's very important. First one, look, it closed above the 50. We still got 30 whole seconds. I want to also turn on my other two EMAs. I'm looking at how close they are. I'm also looking at the support of this zone right here, too. We got 13 seconds. That comes comes up and it closes weak, then I'll take the up trade. But this is going to close all the way through my little zone too. Okay, we're gonna wait. Let's see what happens. This doesn't mean it's going to go down. It's just giving us context. One hundred and two hundred. Look at that. Mm. Give me an engulfing candle. I would love that. Thirty five seconds. That's an area to pay attention to if it closes right. <clears throat> oh. 
Also, price, price has broken the 50. The moving average haven't, hasn't. Does that make sense? Price broke the 50, but our moving average that we're looking at has not. That's what we're looking at. That was mm, not the close I really wanted to see. All right. If it continues to push down and close away from the moving average, price is going to pull that moving average towards it. You can think of price as like a magnet. So when you see price getting far away, it's pulling that moving average. But if the magnet gets too far away from the other magnet, what happens? Well, if it was a magnet, nothing would happen. But just think of it as the magnet has to come back like it won't nothing won't happen. So you have to come back and get the magnet if you think about it like that. So when price is closing really close, you know, the moving average can influence price. That's why taking the trades off the moving average is important. But if price gets too far away, the chances of it pulling back to that moving average is high. Right. So pulling back to the 21, that's high. So we do have some good space between our 21 and our price. But we also have price continuing to try to push down. We have our eight moving average that's actually trying to break the 50. Notice how the 21 is taking a little bit longer. That eight moving average is always going to be closer to price. So looking at how it's doing in this zone. This was my idea earlier. I'm just going to take this off. I'm just take this away. Overall, this is what I want you to be thinking. When we're looking at these candlestick patterns, yes, the candlestick patterns can give us information on when to enter a trade. It can also give us information on when momentum is picking up, as you can see the length. But if we're going to think in terms of moving average, we want to find areas that we can place our trades that's going to allow us to win with price. Like, where can we set our trades and the market will leave. That's like that's how you have to think. So let me draw this out. Let me change my color to yellow so to be obvious, right? Our moving average line is kind of like our tick chart line. So, you know, you can see this is the green moving average. This is the moving average on how it's moving through the chart, right? Now, price, these areas right here are really hard to see. If it was not a moving average on the screen, it would just be, you know, line support resistance, things like that. What I want you to think about, right? Let me change this to red. What I want you to focus on is when you find the things that don't make sense. Right. If I see that price or my moving average is way down here and I have a very strong candle and it's outside of the Bollinger Bands, right? Like that doesn't make sense. So catching an entry in this area for a sale is high. It's hard to do, but it's, it's a high probability. It's just hard to do when you see a strong candle like that to put a sale in for two minutes, that's hard to do, but it makes the most sense when you think about moving average, especially if you see a candle like this and you see pressure like that, right? that makes the most sense in that area. So if you're looking at your moving average and you're just like, all right, I just want to make sense of my moving average or the question that I tell everybody to ask themselves, what's being respected? If you look at this area, look, 50. 50 broke, but it instantly came back down. 50 broke, but it instantly came back down. 50, 50, 50. That makes the most sense. That's why we took a trade right here. That's why we took that trade. That's why we caught that trade. And then you see that you got the great entry. It pushes down again. It gives you another reject. So you see right here, you have another reject, another reject. That's of the 21 right here. So putting an entry right here makes a lot of sense. And it's off of your moving average. You get that movement. Now, all of these right here are, th these are not the best trades. These are, these are not the best trades, but when you see a candle like this, it tries to push up, it pushes down. It tries to push up, it pushes down. It comes up right here, it tries to push up, and it pushes down. When it meets this line right here, placing a trade right there makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. That's a clear, and you have confluence happening. That's the only reason you're going to enter a rejection on this, on pretty much this side of the eight moving averages when you have confluence. And when you also, this is something else that you want to keep in mind too. 
I'm gonna show you something really quick. Okay, let's. Uh, this shouldn't move. I don't think this will move. Let's, let me just get off of this. Let me change this to Hakanashi real quick. All right, all right. You notice this area, like the Hakanashi candles, has the indicators look a little bit different. Like you see how this is all flat bottoms, right? So two minutes in this area, you could win some of those, but if you wait too late, sometimes you probably can get spiked out some. It really just depends. Um, but look how clean, like how clean this looks. I noticed like with the Hakanashi candles, you don't really see like the, um, the, the DI movements. You don't see these lines, the, the green, my green and orange line, which is measuring sellers and buyers pretty much. You don't really see the ADX line under like all, like all the way under with a whole bunch of space, right? Just, just look, pay attention to the ADX, pay attention to the, AD, the ADX. Like you really don't see that, right? You see that they look jumbled up and then when it starts to move, you get that. So that's why it's so clean because when it's starting, when it's starting to move, it's going to move, right? But when you go to the regular candlesticks, Look at this. Look at the space between these two. It's like no pressure in the market. And then when it starts, so, you know, like it really using the regular candlesticks, you can really see when pressure is under the candles, which means what you need to be looking for zones. What EMA is truly being respected? You can even think about that right now. Some EMAs are about to be res respected. I'm about to have some choppiness, but I need to find overall what's not being broken. All right. I can go look right here. Look how much space it gives you. Look, look at the space. You don't really see this where the ADX is under the cat, like with that much space. And it's still showing you crosses really clear like that. Like you really don't see that. So when you see the ADX line under the colors, you really want to see, like go back and just see what makes the most sense. It broke through the 50. Look, it came to the 50. It respected the 50. By the time it comes back to the 50 again, it's matured just a little bit more, right? We had some nice movements, pressure picked up in the market. So when it comes back to the 50, because it broke through the 50 and respected that first time, that doji is a open. That makes a lot of sense placing a buy trade right there. That makes sense. That makes sense because we're on the buyer side of bias. What you're saying is, hey, I don't believe that with the way price is moving right now, that it's going to break the 50. Since I don't believe that, I'm going to place a two-minute trade right here. That's how that's how you trade the moving averages. So if you see that price, right, you see price pushes up, it comes back down, and it's moving like this, and you say, all right, I see this rejection right here. When you place a trade right there, what are you, t what are you pretty much thinking, or what should you be thinking? I believe that because price is not breaking the eight right now, and the way price is currently moving, that in two minutes, it's not going to be below my eight moving average. And you would be correct, All right? Even if it pushes down here again and you catch it as soon as it goes to that zone, it really just depends on what you're comfortable with. If you if you pre-fire too fast, right, you can catch yourself doing this and getting spiked out by this. But if you wait long enough to see the rejection happening, you can catch it on the way up and be inside that candle and really get a good entry. Right. Especially if you're like, OK, it pushed off of my 50. I'm really looking forward to respect my 21. It goes down to the 21. It starts to reject. You could place an entry in there inside that candle. You don't have to wait for the close. You can be a little more aggressive and catch you a nice, clean entry. Right. Um, and the same thing goes if you're believing that it's going to break through. Like sometimes you might say, OK, I see the way price is moving. It pushes down like this. I want to place a sale right here. So let's say it pushes up and it starts to reject this way. And you say, OK. I believe that in two minutes, it's it's going to break the 50. Then you place a sell right there. But as you can see, that would have been the wrong trade. It would have pushed back up. But that would have gave you more information. Like, okay, the 50 really is being respected. Like, like this 50 is not breaking. So the next time you see that, you got to push like that off the 50. When it gets back to the 50 again and you see the rejection, it's much easier to say, hey, I want to place a buy right here. I don't believe that price is going to fall below the 50. I don't believe their price is, is going to break that. So when it gets close to that area, you can put that trade there. You're placing your trade where you believe the equity is on the chart. Boom. That's when you get that push. That's when you get that push. And then it gets easy when you see confluence.
It gets easy when you can see confluence. How can you tell confluence? Well, two ways. One, you will have good space between the buyers and the sellers, and you will see your ADX line grow. You will see it growing like all the way through. So at first, it'll be at the bottom. You'll have that first push when it comes back to start to reject, which normally you get at least one reject and a good push. You got it right here. Look, boom. Look, boom. You got an entry right there. It pushed up. Try to come back up this way. You could catch an entry right there. That's a smack. Got an orange candle. Big smack right there. Orange candle. Two minute smack. Orange candle. Two minute possibly spike out depending on where it is. If you took it as soon as it turned uh, like it went back down towards the green. When in confluence, you just want to have your you just want to have your trade as close to that green line as possible. That's all you want to have. You just want to have a, a trade that's close to the green line as possible. Right. When you're in confluence right here, this grows. Boom. Comes up right here. Even if look, it pushes all the way right here and you took a trade at the top of this two minutes later. That's a smack pushes up past that line just a little bit. But you're trading confluence. You put two minutes right there. That's a smack. Right. Off of the green line. That's a smack. Now, sometimes you would take a trade and, you know, it'll spike you out or it might play a little bit. That just means either you caught the tail end of a movement or the movement wasn't as strong as you thought. And sometimes we run into that. That's okay. But that doesn't mean abandon what you know happens when confluence is happening. So like right here, when you know, we have a long period right here. We have a long period where pretty much pressure is under the colors. We already know what's going to happen. It's going to pick up and it's going to go to a new pivot point. So we caught this trade. It would have pushed up right here. This spike, mm, not really right. Coming up right here, mm, not really right. Now, this rejection tries to push up again, and it pushes back down to that area. You can catch that as a rejection. One minute, two minute. In the middle of this trade, it would have tried to push up again. It'll start dying, dying out again. You could have caught another two minute. And in this trade, you could have caught it. But that's hard to do. I don't even like doing that. So pretty much if you wait this out and just let it get back to the green line, look, still growing. What are you trading? I'm trading confluence. It's at my green line. I'm taking an entry. Two minutes later, it's down here. You don't even have to worry about it. See? Because you're, you have your trade on the moving average. Comes up to the moving average again. I'm trading confluence. Two minutes, boom. You don't even have to worry about it. Came to the moving average again. Two minutes, boom. You don't even have to worry about it. Now, if you catch this one because you're waiting for the close all the time, now you get a super big spike out and you're confused. All right? I catch myself waiting on the close sometimes when I'm not really too sure. But the safest thing to do is put your trade on that moving average when you have, um, you know, confluence. When you're looking at the 21, when you see that, all right, it broke the 21, came back down. Look at that. Stay. It, it pushed it pushed past very strong past the moving average. So this wasn't saying that it rejected to 21. What really happened is you have this long bull candle right here. So it comes back down to your eight, but the eight is still moving up. So you have a break right here and then you have this. So you have price moving down because you have a EMA cross right here that can be used as a signal. I'm not even referencing my ADX right now. Remember, my ADX is getting weak. I'm just looking for the moving averages. Where can I place my trades? What do I believe is going to happen? If I'm looking at the context of this, I'm looking at, OK, very strong candle pushes up. I have an EMA cross and I have price trying to that's pretty fast for price to try to come back in this area. I want to put my trade in this area. Like I want to put my order on top of the 21 because I believe overall it's going to go up two minute smack gets back in that zone again. Two minutes smack gets back in that zone again right here. Two minutes smack. That's all I'm trading. Even if I put it right here on the tip of this two minutes later, look where it closes. Right now, let's say that it pushed down right here and it was 30 seconds. It pushed up and then this kind of spiked me out. Cool, I understand, but I didn't caught so many. That makes sense. I didn't caught so many entries off that 21. That one loss right there doesn't bother me. And, and that's how you break down the information. So I don't want you guys thinking perfect entry. I definitely don't want you thinking, um, you know, it, it's it's a way that you, how can I put this? It's a way where you can never lose. Like, oh, I'm not supposed to never lose. No, that's not true. You're going to incur losses. You're going to have bad days and you're going to have really, really good days. It's just surviving the bad days so you can get paid off of the good days. So thinking about your moving average like this, 
I believe it's going to give you the confidence to enter the trade when you're supposed to enter the trade. Um, another thing that I want to add, when I go live, I notice that people have confidence, like people are watching what I'm doing and they're entering trades way before I'm entering the trades and sometimes clearing more trades than me during my live sessions. What does that mean? That means that when I'm speaking on the live session, you're understanding like the thought process and how I'm breaking the trade down and you're able to come up with your own synopsis of, OK, I want to enter the trade right here. That means that you just need to know how to break down the market. So that's why on this video, I spoke through everything I was doing, how I'm looking at it, breaking through the 50, respecting the 21 and, and finding areas of, of where I want to put my trade and also telling you why I entered the trade. I believe that this is going to take your trading to the next level. I 100 percent believe that if you take this and go practice it and, and practice proper risk management, I believe that you can build an account, get you some profits, pull some money off the broker. OK, so if you got value from this video, I would like for you to leave a comment. Just let me know that you learned something new about the moving averages and that you're going to incorporate this in your trading. I would also like you to like the video. I actually very rarely ask for people to like my video, so I would like you to like the video. It does help me out with the YouTube algorithm. OK, I'm also going to have links pop up, scan codes pop up to my Telegram chat, to my Discord chat to my courses and also which this is going to be my favorite for you to start your broker if you don't have an account that's connected to me or if you don't have an account at all and you want to begin trading i have a scan code that's going to pop up that's going to give you an opportunity to create your to create your account for you to fund the account and for you to go ahead and start trading now i want to put in the forefront that if you use that code to set up your account, two things is going to happen. I'm going to be able to see what you're doing in your region. So if you're in the United States, Australia, if you're in Africa, when I'm checking my stats to see what areas are the most profitable, I'll be able to know who's winning. Right now, Australia is like killing people. It's doing way better than any other region that I have. So congratulations, Australia. Also, the way my link is set up, when you have successful trading, I make residual money. I'm very interested in residual money. That's why I put so much effort and energy into these videos, into the courses, into the, the group chats and stuff that I have, because I want you to win. You make a lot of money. I make a lot of money. That's the way I want it to be. So every time you win a trade, every time you're making profit, I get a piece of what pocket option profits off that percentage difference. So like if you're trading at 92 percent, that 8 percent that you don't get goes to pocket options. And I get a little piece of that. So I want you to know that in the forefront, because my goal is not to just have a whole bunch of people trading and not making money. Then I wouldn't make money. Also, last thing, um, the courses that I have access to fire. And then the very last thing is the Discord chat. That's a chat that costs $19.99 a month, but it is a community of traders that pretty much want to master trading. I have a couple of people who have already flipped their account to five figures. Um, I have a couple of people who I've had some pretty cool success stories. I had a young kid take $300 to actually uh, $16,000 in a week. Um, his best month was like 22K or something like that. So I have a lot of people getting results. I have people that are beginners, intermediate. It's just a place where you can come. You don't have to worry about somebody saying, hey, man, come join my team or, or pay this fee. It's like, look, 20 bucks, be a part of the community, get the skill down, and then add to the community. You know, talk to the moderators, make it better. I believe that by March of next year, I can have well over a thousand people in this chat who are getting profits, not only on pocket options, but also with you know forex trade with trading us 30 or going and trading the currency pairs because you're you know you you're in all areas of trading um, i'm going to add also i don't have that on there yet but i'm going to add uh, cryptocurrencies as far as investing and buying coins and eft so uh nft that's it efts nft so um, i'm super excited i am super excited about where this is going what's happening the results that's coming from this youtube page and the support that i'm getting and I don't take it for granted and I will continue to get better at trading. I'll continue to get results and I will continue to bring the heat so you guys can have high quality information for you to be able to master this skill and get to what you really want to do, which I don't know what that is. And if you want to tell me, drop it in the comment section below. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get those results and I will see you on the next video. Peace.